I'm starting with the lace still on. This week we starting from the trenches. Oh my God. Whatever would she do to turn this all around? Watch it, it's called magic. And a lot of, lot of goops and gels and glitters and shit that I put on my face weekly. Hello everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? Home skillet biscuit. And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. And happy Saturday, but more specifically, happy day of Negroes and love. It's February and I knew this year I wanted to do something a little fun, a little theme. Are we planning ahead? A little bit, I'm kind of, I'm not doing everything the exact last minute because now I have third party reasons why I can no longer do that. I have to pick my dog up from daycare. <laughs> we gotta actually get shit done at some point. So that's why we're filming today on a day that's not the day before the video goes out. So yay me. But yes, this month I wanted to do nothing but romance, but particularly the messiest ones I could find because this is bad movies in a beat. After all, I want chaos. <laughs> like, yeah, it's good to have like, I guess, wholesome love stories, even though there's not that, I actually don't know that many of them. The genre often is not the best for great, healthy, romantic, representation, but um, being that this is my channel, we're gonna look at some wild ones, as many as I could find. Before we get started though, we gotta handle bills. Again, I pay for daycare <laughs> for my dog, which by the way, I might actually show Rusted in this video. I have to pick her up probably before I'll be done fi filming this video. But apparently my dog is like the it girl at daycare. All the dogs wanna play with her. All the humans wanna be around her because she's so cuddly and so cute. They don't know that she's a menace. <laughs> She is my daughter after all. She has a little uh, red coat that she goes in. It's called a Canada pooch. <laughs> she goes in her little Canada pooch coat and then like I take her to daycare and then I'm like, oh my God, is that Russet? And then she's like wagging her tail, but she doesn't just wag her tail. She moves her whole butt. So she's like in mid air as I'm giving them the dog. And she's like, wait, wait, wait. I have bills is what I'm getting at. Uh, I have to pay for her daycare. So yes, sending it over to add roll Kenny. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kinney and today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds offer premium sound and quality at a fraction of the price of other premium audio brands. But the lower price point doesn't mean that they skimp on features. They come with noise isolation and awareness mode, custom gel tips so that you can get the fit that fits best for your ear holes. And so I was gonna say, so they don't come out, can't say the same for my hat though. They're water and sweat resistant. They offer different sound profiles. There's pure sound, balanced sound, and bass sound. Personally, I'm all about the bass, so that's where I stay. And one of my personal favorite things about Raycon is that the battery life on both the case and the earbuds themselves, forever. <laughs> Not forever, but, but like eight hours. The earbuds themselves are about eight hours and the case is 32. You can pause, play, answer phone calls, control volume. Whether it's while listening to a podcast, music, while doing chores, interpretive dancing, it's good to know the Raycons got my back and are delivering quality every time. So if you would like to check out Raycon, you can click on the link down in the description box. That's buyraycon.com slash Kenny to get 15% off of your Raycon purchase. Big thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Okay, so last time we were here, we talked about my love known as The Menu. I'm happy that a lot of you guys were tweeting me and saying like, Kendall, I watched it because of you because you were gushing about it, love it. Definitely a good movies in a glam type situation. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I love that movie. That'll be linked up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beach playlist. So like I said, this week we are returning to Tubi and we're doing movies that are, you know, in some way or another related to love. But if it's on Tubi, it's probably not the best parts of it. If it's on my channel, it's probably not the best parts of it. When have I ever done like a completely healthy romantic uh, movie on this channel? Is it because like healthy romance doesn't make for great TV? Even if you're happy together, that doesn't mean that life doesn't send you challenges. I don't know, let's do more stories of like people who are happy in relationships but life be life in and they are able to find strength within each other. That'd be cute. Uh, on the complete opposite spectrum though, today we're gonna talk about a movie from Tubi that is actually a sequel to a film that we watched last year, if I'm not mistaken. Was that last year? But the movie was called He Played Me, was if I'm not mistaken, the first Detroit Hood movie I had done for this channel. And today is a momentous day because today we're looking at the sequel called He Played Me Too, which gotta say, you really dropped the ball on that opportunity. He played me again. I gotta 
to say before I even get into this movie specifically, I have found a deep joy and wonderment in the recent popularization of hood movies on Tubi. Not to brag, but I think I'm gonna have something to do with it. <laughs> Seems like a lot of people are discovering it and it's like, ugh, this and passion flits. When will I ever get my flowers? <laughs> Speaking of me taking credit for something that has nothing to do with me, uh, I kind of feel like this movie specifically, I have, I had some influence. If you recall, I did a video on the first movie. I remember the movie being terrible, but it made for great content. That's to be generally speaking. And it was the beginning of us catapulting into like periodically checking in on Tubi and seeing what's going on. The first movie, if you recall, kind of ended pretty definitely. It was pretty over. It's based on a true story. That story seemingly was, was done. Whereas this movie kind of was created and it felt like it was made because they knew they had gold on their hands and they had to capitalize off of it. The movie be being somewhat popular was enough to make a second one. And I'm sure me making a shitty video on it didn't hurt that situation. But this movie does feel a bit like an afterthought, like a film that they didn't know that they were gonna make, um, even more so than the first one. <laughs> I love how I said this with so much confidence and conviction, but there's definitely a second book already out that came out in 2019. But if I acknowledge that, then I can't continue this joke. So I'm gonna add it in here anyway. I might have something to do with it. I don't, I don't, no one asked for an interview from me, but I've made a whole video on it. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. But uh, just a quick reminder of what it, it's about. It's about a woman named Yasmin who starts off in that movie in a loveless, uh, borderline sexless marriage with a man with an alcohol problem. And she decides to start cheating on him with two people, a woman named Naya, and a dude named Jai. She ends up having a very healthy relationship with Naya, but she don't wanna go there. She wants to go with some dude named Jai. But come to find out, Jai is who? Jai is Nadia, so the side chick's ex-husband and father of her child. But she doesn't find that out until she already marries Jai, the second dude. So come to find out her new husband's ex-wife is her old side bitch. Oh, and she didn't know that he had a kid. She thought that the kid that is his son was his nephew. So she found out he got a kid too. For this and other reasons, the relationship turns sour between Jai and Yasmin. And when she decides to leave him, he puts a hit out on her. She gets shot and barely survives, but she's able to survive. She writes a book about her life and about how she discovered self-love after nearly dying in her abusive relationship. And that's the end of the movie. There's a lot other, there's a lot going on more in that movie, but that's the gist of it. Very watered down. Again, watch the video if you like to get specifics, okay? Now, being that this is a sequel, there are obvious things in which they've improved. It's pretty evident the things that they've uh, done better. Um, Maybe they watched my last video. Pretty obvious they have a bigger budget, better cameras. Cameras are like weirdly good quality. Like, holy shit. There's much less music, thank God. And this movie doesn't drag nearly as much as the first. It actually has a, you know, pretty good pacing actually. Um, so again, good. Like seeing my notes applied. Um, <laughs> this movie does have a plot, which puts it ahead of other Tubi movies I've seen, but it, it does give up on the plot somewhere at the end. Very little makes sense. Nothing is resolved and most, Importantly, it has perhaps one of the most deeply unsatisfying endings I've seen in film. <laughs> like in any movie, on any location, any streaming site, this is probably the least satisfying film I've ever watched to, to the end. Uh, with that said, I'm not sure if that's because it's trying to keep itself open for yet another sequel and I'm kind of, I don't know how I feel about that. At least that would justify ending the movie like this. It's a mess. I'm telling you, it's a com catastrophe. Uh, but if not, that's still equally hilarious. I love how y'all were making a film and just said, okay, like cut it, cut it, I'm done. There is something like unironically hilarious about a person giving up on their film right at the end like this. So either way they wanna do it, I'm all, I'm along for the ride, babe. This movie has a lot going on, so let's jump right into it. This is He Played Me Too. Not He Played Me Again, He Played Me As Well. He Played Me Too. So this film takes off right after Yasmin gets shot from the first movie, yeah? Why is she wearing a bonnet in the hospital? <laughs> it would seem that since the first movie she had new injuries, uh, <laughs> they have they, they go into like how she had gotten shot all over the place in ways that we didn't see in the first movie. You can tell pretty quickly that the camera quality again is way better than the first movie. Um, them Tubi checks running in, I guess. 
How do people from Tubi make money? Well, they have they have sponsors, right? They have commercials, right? It's like AdSense. Maybe Tubi's the plug and we just don't know it yet because we don't believe in ourselves, but these people do. Huh. But the camera quality definitely has improved. Also the sets they pay for, like those have actually improved quite a bit. The wigs, continuity, not so much. But yeah, she's a... It's not like Fritos. Why you smell like Fritos? Gross. Her sons are with her at the hospital and they're like 100% sure that the person that ended up attacking her or in some way related to the man that attacked her has to be that no good Jai. And ding, 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 they're correct. But Yasmin isn't really in the place that she wants to fully accept that Jai isn't just like a bad husband and a cheater and a liar and abusive, but he wouldn't try to kill her. What? No. Not the guy who's all around good in every other circumstance. Lucky for Yasmin, she's able to eventually leave the hospital with generally minor injuries. She does have to do a bit of PT for her foot. Well, with that said, there was talk from the uh, egghead looking, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> from the doctor saying that they almost had to amputate two toes, but her sons convinced her not to do it then you didn't need to cut off two toes. It feels like cutting off two toes well, you were too ready to do when there's other options. Like if there's an option between keeping her toes and getting rid of them, I feel like keeping them is usually the go-to choice. But American Psycho over here just chopping body parts off for ha-has, just for funnies. Someone take his license away, what the hell? Elsewhere, Jai has gotten buff as f uh, I guess we're not supposed to ask how much time has passed for him to gain that much muscle mass, even though she just got shot, but okay, cool. Another update is that he is back with his first wife, Nadia. What? Because if you recall in the first movie, he abused her, he cheated on her, beat on her, uh, made her his parole officer so that he don't have to go back to jail. It was a lot going on, girl, watch the first video. He left her for Yasmin. Granted, she was cheating on him when he was away in jail, but um, compared to what he did, and it's not like she didn't wanna leave him. He's just abusive and crazy. So who knows if she would have even survived that, you know? But yeah, her, Nadia, his first wife, she back with him. And I'm like, girl, you didn't block him. You did not block him. And I I know, I know people go back because leaving is hard, people, attachments, whatever. But I'm just like, damn, ain't no good ever came to taking a go back. <laughs> Sorry, I just feel like there is no dick good enough in the world for this. No dick, amen, shall prosper over me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to be back with him, but it makes even less sense to be back with him in this movie because he's extra terrible in this one. The, I mean, in the last one, he was awful. He was abusive, he was terrible, but it seems like they really roided it up for this movie. I guess because he got away with being abusive and terrible in the last movie, he feels like he can do whatever now they see on the news about Yasmin getting shot uh apparently they're saying like a woman a local Detroit woman has been shot uh outside of her home blah 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 and Jai kind of says flippantly like oh it seems like our side bitch has run into some trouble she's having some bad luck make sure it doesn't rub up on you Nadia or whatever but Nadia is disgusted by Jai she correctly concludes that he had something to do with her getting attacked, Yasmin getting attacked. And like I said, he's like horrible, like even more so in this movie. So he strikes her in the face and then blames her for him not being able to be with Yasmin. Refers to Yasmin as the love of his life, which is, you definitely just shot her. How is she the love of your life when you left her for dead, ho? Like. This lip is ugly. I'm sure you guys have been waiting for me to wipe it off because it is ugly, hold on. So Nadia asked a very fair question. She's like, well, why do you want me back then? Why did you come back to me then? Why did you beg to have me take you back? Like, what? Like, what is it? Why? Do, if you don't want me, you think I'm so terrible, you want Yasmin, what you talking to me for then? And he's like, well, cause you a dumb bitch and you took me back. It's very spot on writing. <laughs> he gives like a long play by play of the last movie and basically how Yasmin was always better than Nadia and that she was better than her in every way. And that was the woman he should have really ended up with because Nadia is just a shell of a woman, just an awful piece of shit, garbage human. She's still with him. She doesn't try to break up with him. She complains about how he should just break up with her then. Then it's like, you need to shoot that. I mean, that'll get me to modify. Someone needs to, uh, 
make this man meet God, brother in Christ. Like he continues on to explicitly say that he doesn't respect her, that Yasmin was a challenge and she demanded respect and that Nadia will never be like that because she's weak. Again, very on the nose writing. And then Nadia kind of says self-deprecatingly like, well, Yasmin is completely out of your league. So I guess you're stuck with me. Movie magic, it's been a half an hour and I had to go get someone very special. Say hi, Russet. Don't judge her for looking like a mess. She just came from daycare. She smells terrible. She's getting a bath tomorrow. Yes, you getting a bath tomorrow because you smell like ass, bubba. I love you. <laughs> Nadia says that he could never have a woman like Yasmin. She's completely out of his league. So I guess he's stuck with her. And then commences an incredibly explicit and I did not expect this to happen so quickly. Well, at all, but especially this explicit, there is an essay scene. Please skip it. It adds nothing to the experience. It's incredibly jarring and unnecessary. I really wish they would have skipped it. We would have known he's trash without this. Like again, he was bad in the first movie. He was awful in the first movie, but this one they're really revving it up to make him the ultimate evil. And like somebody really needs to sh sh send this guy to a pasta, amen. <laughs> but after attacking her, he then uh, commences to threaten her uh, so that she'll go and find a woman who will participate in a threesome with them that night. Apparently we find out later that that's the only way that he likes to have sex these days is in a threesome. Back at the hospital, we see the best friend again from the first movie, the one that was the best performer in the first movie. She's still great. She's good enough to be in something Tyler Perry adjacent. I really feel like that she, sh she should aim higher. She's good. Does she sing? We can see if we can get something going. If she sing, we can, we can get her in something Tyler Perry. Anyway, she's at the hospital checking on Yasmin um, and helping her process that she was nearly killed by her ex-husband. And Yasmin is like, I just have so many regrets. If it weren't for Jai, I wouldn't have left Terry, who was her first husband, who had a problem with alcohol. He was also just generally kind of a bum. I would have perhaps stayed with Terry, which is like, there's always a third option, which is neither. <laughs> and meanwhile, uh, Nadia goes to a friend to confide Jai, abusing her again and talking about how she took him back and how she feels so stupid for taking him back. But she just wanted to win against Yasmin so bad. And the friend is like, what did you win? You were competing for an abusive cheater. So I guess you won, you got your man, you fighting for this prize, I guess. Then Nadia asks this friend if she'd be down to have a threesome with her and her abusive partner that she just told how terrible and awful he is. And she's like, no. And Nadia's like, that's messed up. Cause remember when I those when you couldn't pay your rent? And I was like, <laughs> Like I have some very close friendships, some of which I even consider literal family. I ain't never been asked to f rent. <laughs> Why was that your first thought? There's all these that we could do like a lemonade stand <laughs> or a GoFundMe. But she do hit her with that damn you right face. Like, yeah, you right, you did f <laughs> my rent. And so I guess she's like, all right, I guess I'll participate in this threesome. Back with Yasmin, they move her into the new house that her boys uh, are hiding her in. And where the hell is this in Michigan? I'm dead ass, where is this? Are they still in Michigan? Where are we? With that said, her sons, after renting this incredibly extravagant ass mansion ass home, is like, we gotta start worrying about these bills. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, cause y'all just got a mansion. She couldn't go to Southfield, like what the hell? But they quit their jobs at her hookah bar. If you remember in the first movie, she opened a hookah bar. But now they have to figure out what they're gonna do money-wise because the hookah bar isn't really doing great cause no one's there to run it, yada, yada, yada. What is the first choice they choose? Drugs, exactly. Without hesitation, they like, we gotta sell drugs. What, what, why are we selling drugs? What do you mean sell drugs? And they were like, lo and behold, we've been selling drugs for years, mama. And we, it's been great. We've been doing great. We've been selling drugs for years. We just gonna sell some weed and that'll, you know, that'll keep you uh, going. And we can sell it out the hookah shop. Now, Yasmin is like, no, nah, we ain't selling no drugs. We ain't selling no drugs, which is also funny because again, it is legal in Michigan. <laughs> just get the license to sell it, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's more involved than I'm aware. Again, I don't really smoke. So she's like, no, we're not doing that. But after her insurance runs out on her physical therapy and Eggman is like, you gotta figure out, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't call him Her doctor <laughs> says, you gotta figure out something. Um, otherwise, you're screwed. We got this mansion mortgage now, about time we start selling some drugs. Uh, back to that threesome, it happens. 
Um, it's very uncomfortable. Uh, well, it's uncomfortable leading up to it, but whoever like set up this scene forgot that it's supposed to be a scene that's not sexy. <laughs> Like, it's a scene that's coercion. They they remember that leading up to the scene, but not at all during. It's like a regular, they f it for real, and that was right. And then they remember again afterwards. <laughs> it kind of feels like they were doing the sex scene and it was like, we don't need it to be super realistic. We don't want to ruin the mood. It's like, we got to remember that people are watching this Tubi movie to see some people f and we don't have to obscure it with the you know, somewhat shady ethics of the situation and coercion and all that. We can worry about that as bookends to the scene, but don't fuck up the titties and scene. And but again, afterwards we have to like actually deal with the fundamental disgust that the friend feels after being coerced into doing something like that. Um, and she's basically like, don't ever ask me to do no shit like that again. And it would seem that that would take a big hit to their friendship and does. It would take a sh and hit to mine because again i guess i if i don't i wouldn't do this for no friends and no friends would do this for me i guess i'm all alone there's <laughs> no one here beside me my problems have all gone there's no one to deride me but you gotta have friends <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. She's like, please stop. I want to go to bed. All right. So after this threesome and Jai being a verbally abusive shit has, as per usual, Nadia makes a snide remark about how she has to go to work in the morning because someone has to pay these bills. You know, he takes that as a jab uh, at him not bringing any income home into the house. And I'm like, he broke too. <laughs> like he's abusive. He's shitty. He's a rapist. He's a mur attempted murderer and possibly a murderer too. And he don't make no money? Like, what, what, what happened to all that hustling from the first movie? He not hustling? You only hustle on the weekend? And as you'd imagine, the truth hits too close to home and he ends up being reactive the way that you would expect, considering he's an abusive dick nugget as we are very well aware. At the hospital, checking up on her foot and her other injuries, Yasmin ends up running into Terry, her first husband, and his new pregnant fiance, so, the new fiance, not a fan of Yasmin. I thought this was going to be a new like story arc. We never come back to it, but just letting you know, he moved on, he got a new wife, good for him. And with that said, that's not the only arc that we don't come back to. Again, wait till the end. So Yasmin is introduced to her son's plug, which weirdly enough is Jai's friend from the first movie. Um, as you would expect, she's incredibly disturbed, perturbed, confused about this development. Why would her sons who hate Jai, who believe that he shot their mother, want to work with his best friend? Well, apparently they're not friends anymore. Apparently now he's working with some dude named E. Uh, if you're following the Detroit Hood movie to be uh, cinematic universe, he was the fine cop in that other movie, These Men for Everybody. You remember, he was the fine cop in These Men Forever. I also did a video on that. I'll link that down below as well, if I remember. He always plays the guy that we're supposed to root for theoretically, but the writers aren't fully aware of how to write a man who doesn't suck. <laughs> so according to canon, I'm supposed to think he's great just because he's not explicitly and overtly abusive and violent. Also, he light-skinned. So, you know, that's supposed to be all the green lights to know that he's perfectly great to be the, the redeeming love interest. Rest assured, anyone paying attention just a little bit more than surface level would say that this man sucks ass. Though they're not friends, that hasn't stopped Jai from trying to keep a bit in contact with the friend. He goes to visit him while he's in the studio because apparently he's a, everybody has to do the studio at least once. Um, the friend cusses him out because apparently the reason they're not cool anymore is because, uh, I don't know, something something vaguely about money, something that made the friend lose $50,000. It's not super important. But Jai's like, I know you don't like me, but I need to start hustling again. These streets are dry. And the ex-friend who is supposed to be cool with uh, Yasmin and her sons at this point says the least productive things he could have said, which is basically the streets ain't dry. Your ex-wife's kids out there selling on your block or whatever. I don't know what the streets do. Back with E, or as I like to refer to in my notes as Mr. Lightskin, uh, he, he goes up to Yasmin and basically starts on this whole like, why are you so standoffish black woman? That's why you need to learn how to love again. And I'm like, 
Ah, uh, she just got shot from the last person she loved. Um, I take a little time to think on it because <laughs> like, you know, some somehow we ended up here. Miss Lightskin then refers to her as, quote, one of them damaged, angry, fine ass black women. <laughs> I mean, all you need is man to love you right, no. treat you right, and f you right. No. But I guess you haven't met him. This is the guy we're supposed to root for, by the way. If you're confused, like, oh, is he just like another terrible person? No, he's the magnum opus. He's the summit, the best she's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> so prepare for that shit. Which is why to me, because this man is given just as many red flags as any of the other in this movie have, or the series has. So I'm just sitting there just like, oh, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, damn, this bitch can't catch a break. But apparently this is it. This is the break. Fast forward and it's one of her son's 21st birthday, the light-skinned one's 21st birthday. Um, and his idea of a great time, now being able to legally consume alcohol, is to go to the strip club with his, uh, with his brother, Miss Lightskin and his mama. Side note, did I ever tell y'all I used to live next to a bunch of strip clubs? Cause I did. They were always nice. A lot of times the strip club girls would work in the Coney Island restaurants next door. If you don't know what a Coney Island restaurant is, it is not a place in New York. It is a style of restaurant where they cook too many things on one menu. I love it. Uh, very Detroit, Metro Detroit staple. Um, but yeah, if you ever go to a Coney Island right next to a strip club, the wings gonna be spectacular. So will the Greek salads, omelets, hash browns, corned beef sandwiches. There's a lot of stuff on those menus. Again, look it up. It was always the girls who would strip that worked in the Coney Islands in the uh, drive-through those days and they would have really good wings. Now, I never went to any of the strip clubs, but apparently my friend Mama, she used to go all the time because the wings were good. They were probably the same wings. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, he went to the strip club with his mama. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, which is convenient enough because this is where we're gonna be reintroduced to Miss Lumpy Booty. Uh, if you recall, Lumpy was in the first movie. I'm sorry, she had a name. Her name in my notes was Lumpy though. And um, because her BBL was a circumstance truly. Uh, but she goes up to Yasmin and they do this whole like uh, the, the kind of catty innuendo about how they had a threesome. They had a threesome in the last movie. It was a lot going on, girl. She, okay, the strip Lumpy. <laughs> Lumpy was having sex with Jai while he was still married to Nadia and when he was trying to get with Yasmin and was starting to get to, with Yasmin and after they had gotten married, Yasmin and Jai. And she knew that he was cheating on her with Lumpy, but she still had a threesome to like, she had a threesome as a power play somehow. Bitch, I knew you was fucking my husband, but I figured, shit, he having fun. I might as well join in on the festivities. It's such an odd pissing contest of them going back and forth with like, remember when you ate my ass? I, they, they don't say that, but that's the vibe. It's like, well, you think you better than me, bitch, but you was shivering when I was eating your ass. But lo and behold, if you thought this was gonna be at all important, it's not, we don't come back to this either. Again, the, I feel like they made this movie in three days and they said, we gotta, we gotta capitalize. We don't finish shit. We just capitalize, just get another movie out. Go, go, go. It's like the fast fashion of film. But Yasmin goes back to the table and she's like, I have a migraine, I wanna go home. Um, and Light Skin is like, no, I got you, I'll drive you back. He takes her back to the house and he rubs her feet and basically tells her that she needs to stop being sad about getting shot because it, quote, isn't a good look on her. Uh, you gotta stop it with the pity party stuff, yes. That's not a good look on you. Regardless, she's rightfully offended. And then he refers to her as a brat for reacting appropriately to the information provided. You go with this bratty ass attitude anytime something doesn't go your way. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't going her way the when she got shot. What the hell? The world does not revolve around yes. You need to stop your ass from running and face all that bitterness and hurt. Oh my God, do not touch her. Stop, this is not sexy. Oh my God. The thing that blows me is that, again, this man is supposed to be qualitatively different from the other men that she's interacting with up until this point. This man would be j maybe just slightly less abusive than Jai. He probably wouldn't outright kill you, but uh, emotional abuse? So at the hookah bar with Yasmin's sons, there ends up being a rival drug crew that ends up coming into the bar and basically saying like, hey, stop selling. 
weed on our turf, man, or there's gonna be some prop. And they like, we not afraid of you. And they leave off ominously to perhaps reappear, who knows? It's really a bingo at this point what actually gets finished in this movie, so. Uh, Yasmin and her friend have a barbecue. The friend, this is a side note, this is not important to the story, but one of the dudes from these men for everybody, again, the to be Detroit hood movie cinematic universe. Yeah, I mean, that, he don't really do much in the movie, I just like mentioning it. Her and her friend end up talking a bit about Miss Lyskin, and Yasmin's like, yeah, I like him so much cause you know, he know how to take control. You know, he know how to put me in my place. <laughs> Which is a lot of thing to say, considering you just left an abusive relationship. But again, we accept the love we think we deserve. But like, seriously, this dude sucks, okay? Again, I'm confused about what they actually expect me to feel and what they want me to like about this guy uh, that is different from any of the other men that she's dated. Like this dude also sucks. <laughs> Wow, this movie is shockingly unaware of itself in a way that's both comedic and oh so confusing. Back with Nadia and Jai, they're arguing because she wants him to love her, I guess, uh, and he does it, which is pretty apparent. At some point while they're talking, he accidentally refers to her as Yasmin and this sends her into a bit of a spiral. She's like, I'm not Yasmin. I'm Nadia. And then she starts to taunt him like, wow, you you must really love her. His response as per usual is to get violent. He throws a glass in her face and mushes her. It's actually astounding the, the many ways that the human body can just shut down from poisoning or getting shot or stabbed. This is not at all related to this at all, of course. It's not that I condone violence, except when I explicitly do. <laughs> But again, this is the contrast they put up. Nadia is in an explicitly abusive relationship and Yasmin is in love with someone that I'm supposed to believe loves her uh, based off of the evidence that we've seen thus far. Nadia goes to that friend that she had a threesome with, right? And the friend is like, I'm really not in the mood to see you for obvious reasons, cause that was some bullshit. And Nadia gets mad at her because it's really up for her to not wanna be friends after she was just coerced into a threesome. Later, Jai does an intimidation drive outside of Yasmin's hookah bar and out comes Mr. Lightskin to basically tell him to get the fuck off the property because we know who you are and he ain't afraid of you, he'll take you out. Miss Lightskin goes to Yasmin and asks her to go on a trip together, um, something that Yasmin is incredibly cautious about. This upsets him and he tells her that she is so afraid to love again or some shit. And the sheer fact that this woman is a bit cautious around men in general infuriates him. That makes him mad. Mad at her for not wanting to jump into a serious relationship after getting out of an incredibly awful DV situation that almost ended her life. But he's so upset that she can't just get over it enough to go on a trip with- Why are you getting upset? You know exactly what I went through with my ex. How could I forget? You bring it up all the time. What? <laughs> yes, you bring up getting shot all the time and it's really hampering on our vacation plan. And again, I thought this was gonna be the turning point. This is gonna be the moment. Cause they even play the music. They're like, doom, 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 doom. like it's like a bad vibe. So I thought this was gonna be the moment where he like shifts and turns into the awful dude, but no, he's still gonna be the good guy. This is just him like, putting his foot down or quote unquote, putting her in her place. She's a grown ass woman. She don't need to be placed nowhere. But he's so upset that he's like, he's done, he's over it. And he storms out because she's not rushing to go on a trip after she just got shot. He breaks up with her. That's essentially what happens. I'm like, why? Back with Jai and Nadia, uh, Jai doesn't pick up his son from kindergarten. And Nadia's like, what's going on with that? So when she gets home, come to find out, Jai is at home in bed with the friend that didn't want to do the threesome. Not only that, Nadia's like, really you gonna do this to me after everything you saw the do to me, everything that he put me through? And she's like, well, you stayed. And now I see why. I cannot, I cannot, I shan't. <laughs> but the friend is like, well, he ain't gonna treat me like he treated you. 
That's a wild ass thing to say. Let me just say this. If you're ever in a situation like this, if you think that the formerly abusive man is not gonna be abusive to you, hate to break it to you. Him being abusive has nothing to do with who he's dating. That's wild. And she said it with so much confidence. She was so utterly sure of herself when she said that. Oh, you smell terrible. I'm, I'm sorry that this is the first time you see her when she's literally covered in sweat and a, smell a little bit like pee. Back at the shop, Yasmin's sons end up getting shot at outside of the hookah shop. Um, uh, presumably the other turf that is upset with them selling drugs in the area. Yasmin freaks out and before she can fully process that her sons almost got shot, she gets a call from the fire department that her hookah bar is on fire. They get there and luckily there's not a lot of major damage to the hookah shop. Um, or if there is, we don't see it because they don't have a budget for that. But what we do get is Miss Lightskin coming with a date. What a f***ing loser. <laughs> you brought a girl for being on a date with a and he's like, hey, can we cut this short? And can you drive with me to go to my ex who I broke up with yesterday's hookah shop? Uh, it got burned down. Like what the f am I here for? What am I here for? Take me home. Give me an Uber. Okay, you got business. You got shit. I mean, I don't know you. Standing outside of the hookah shop that just got burned down and someone got shot at earlier in the day. But after the girl goes back into the car, Yasmin's like, see, this is what I'm talking about. All you are the same. We ain't even been broken up a day and here you are with another woman. I get it. You the prize, yes. I am too. Fucking loser. Fake ass Tyler James Williams ass. But as you can imagine, Yasmin's been through a lot today. She started crying about everything, about her past relationships, about her hookah bar, about her sons almost getting shot, about the death of her father in the last movie. Remember the guy that was playing her father who was like 35? And something about remembering her father made her decide that she does not want to do the weed thing anymore. So they stopped doing it, they closed the weed business. The, the light-skinned son don't like that they're stopping the weed business, but she slaps him in the face and verbally abuses him. And then he's like, I guess comes around to the idea. And without her addressing that at all, they make up and he tells her about how he's investing now and how Miss light -skin taught him how to invest. And that's how he's making his money now, which hate to break it to you, but odds are you're not making that much money off of investments that quickly. Hello, ma'am. Then he says, since I learned how to do investments from Miss light -skin, you really need to take him back. Everyone has terrible judgment in this movie. <laughs> Sorry. So Yasmin decides to go to Miss Light Skin and at his house, Nadia's there. And Yasmin's like, I can't escape this bitch in Jai. I can't escape neither of y'all. I cannot shake this bitch. Come to find out, uh, the only reason that he knows her is because uh, they found out as adults that they're brother and sister. Nadia's like, remember that situation I was in when I was a woman? Well, this the woman. Now light skin is like, you gay? So you gay? And <laughs> So you gay? No, I'm not gay. I'm, I'm not even on that. Wait, you used to be gay. <laughs> Movie sucks, dog. And she's like, no, it was just a phase. How am I supposed to get over your phase when your phase was you fucking my sister? <laughs> But after she calms down a little bit, she's like, you know what? I'm in love with you, light skin, for some reason. And I can't move on from my past if the man I love, his sister is a constant reminder of it. And you would think with that being the conversation, that would be her saying that she won't be with him, but it stops nothing. They stay together. She's like, oh, I gotta choose. She's like, oh, I gotta choose myself. And then she stays with him in the next scene. Like she didn't choose shit. <laughs> like, don't he dare f propose. Don't he dare, oh my God, this guy stinks. But he proposes and then you're supposed to think like, well, okay, then that, then that should be it, right? I don't think he's great, but shit, she chose him. So that's the end of the movie, right? Girl, we still got 20 minutes left. So Nadia's ex-friend now comes to Nadia talking about how she getting beaten by Ja now and that she's also pregnant with his child. And all she does is laugh like, oh, I see you wearing some sunglasses like I used to wear. I used to have a very similar pair insinuating that she's using it to cover black eyes. Yasmin gets $200,000 from the insurance of her hookah shop and she decides to invest it 
And I guess that's it. She's now very, very rich. She goes on a trip with him. Apparently he's originally from California and he has like a mansion out there or something. So she's ready to go off with him. So she goes to a Detroit ass boutique. That's a Detroit ass boutique. Getting ready to find clothes to go on that trip. And here comes Jai's hating ass. Like, why haven't I been able to see you? Yasmin is like, I have a restraining order on you. Get the f out of here. Wait a second, I just realized. This movie did not at all finish, oh, why am I surprised? But it never finished the core arc of them investigating him for the shooting. <laughs> I feel like that's when you really shouldn't have dropped the ball. Cause like, why isn't he in jail? Why is he just walking around and people are investigating him for shooting his ex-wife who's still alive and can testify that he's probably someone who tried to shoot him. But regardless of why he's still free, Yasmin and Miss Lightskin go to that trip to California. All they do is relax, eat food, have sex in a jacuzzi. I don't recommend it for your pH, but go ahead if you want to. And then in the most anticlimactic way that you could possibly do this, mind you, for the last two hours, we've been watching Jai be the f worst. And again, this like super villain, piece of shit, terrible guy. The way that they decide to deal with that arc is for him to get shot by a random person off screen. Somebody killed Ja? Oh my God. I hate you so much. I cannot hate you more. We don't see him get shot. We don't see nobody roll up on him, nothing. It's just a cut of her having fun in California, hard cut to her looking at Instagram and people saying, damn, miss you big dog, he did. I could, like, I hate y'all, I could throw up. And I'm sitting here like, we, I, mm, I sat here for so long trying to find where your point was. And when we get here, the got shot off screen. Regardless, that's basically the end of the movie. Uh, They get married. She does a, like a voiceover conclusion. Boy, we had a time, like <laughs> conclusion of the film. And then she just says, I forgive Jai and I hope he rests in peace being that he dead and all. And they do like beauty shots of her in California and she winks at the camera. That's the movie. I'm never gonna get that time back. You're never gonna get that time back. And I feel responsible for this. If I would've just shut up, I'd like make another video on it. If I would've just shut up, I'm giving myself too much credit, they probably were gonna make this movie regardless, but it is funny to think that I had something to do with it. Regardless, here's another video and happy Valentine's month. That's all for today, folks. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny GAD. If you wanna send me movie recommendations, feel free to send those down in the comment section over on Twitter or on the Bad Movie Biscuits Discord. See everybody's stuff, but when you guys send stuff, it's always fun. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Say bye, Bubba. She's like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> I wanna go to bed.